We were looking forward to a big space launch this time yesterday. NASA were preparing to blast off their most powerful ever rocket. Well, sadly, the unmanned mission to orbit the moon didn't happen because of a technical fault. Well, Dr Ken Kramer is a research scientist and space journalist. He joins us now from Florida. Morning to you. Um, it was so Good disappointing, morning. wasn't it? We were all watching. We previewed this on the programme yesterday morning. But I guess this is just what happens in missions like this. It is just what happens. You know, it is a little disappointing, but we have to be safe. And so there's nothing wrong that that uh, with the delay. Better to have a delay than a disaster. So, you know, it's extremely exciting. We haven't returned to the moon in 50 years, and now we're actually going. It'll take a few more days. They have to find out what went wrong with that engine yesterday. And uh, we're going to get an update later today about whether they will actually try and launch on Friday or, or it will need a little bit more work. But uh, everybody's real excited and real pumped here. But, Ken, you put the pictures up on your wall, you put your rocket shirt yeah. on. <laughs> oh, it must be yeah. disappointing. Well, it, it's disappointing. And those are my, sh my shots of the <laughs> SLS rocket and Orion and James Webb. You know, these were all great things. But, you know, whether it launches today or tomorrow or, or a month from now doesn't really matter. It, it has to be successful. Nobody is going to remember uh, a year from now that it was delayed a couple of days. But if it, it fails, they'll remember that forever. So we have to do everything we can possibly do to ensure that this rocket is a success. Because two years from now, we want to launch humans on Artemis 2. They will fly around the moon. And then on Artemis 3, we will launch... Um, a, a crew of four, and they will land on the moon, including the first woman and the first person of color. So this mission is so critical. It's a test flight, but it's going to pave the path to, to the moon and even eventually to Mars. And Ken, how important is it that that path is paved? Because this is like you're explaining it to us. It's literally just a step on the journey now, isn't it? It's just on a step. Um, yes, it's just a step on the journey. Exactly. Now, 50 years we were going to the moon on Apollo. Real exciting when I was a kid. I've waited for this moment my entire life. And we have to have humanity expand beyond the moon. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, expand beyond the Earth. So when we go to the moon, we're actually going to go to the South Pole. And why is that important? Because that's where the water ice is and these permanently shadowed craters. So we'll be able to live off the off the land because the water we can convert into hydrogen and oxygen, rocket fuel, breathable air and water you can drink. And we need the moon as a proving ground to get to Mars because that's a three year trip. So we have to prove the technology can work and be successful because when those astronauts go to Mars, there's no turning back. There's no catching up to them. So it really has to be successful. And, and we want to, you know, we want to become more than a single planet species. You know, as Elon Musk is trying to do, also working together with NASA. You talked about when you were a kid uh, and the moon landings there and, and how that inspired you. What is your hope about how this Artemis project might inspire the next generation, kids who are watching over the next few days? Well, that's exactly why I'm talking to you and I'm talking to other networks. I give lectures at all kinds of groups, kids. Uh, college students, adults, I'm a scientist. I want to inspire and educate the public, enlighten them, and get kids to study math and science and make something of themselves. Because when we invest in science and technology, that's how we grow our economy. You know, the world has a lot of difficulties right now. But we can't, you know, we can't just sit around and do nothing. We have to advance. And I worked making medicines for many years in in pharmaceutical industry and i want to inspire kids to do all those kind of things be a scientist contribute to society make humanity better and and point the way to the future so that's you know that's what i'm all about and i really thank you for the opportunity to to speak to your audience today well thank you for joining us i'm trying to work out what time it must be middle of the night there it's the middle of the night. But like I said, I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys. I got no sleep, you know, because that's the way journalism is, especially the base space business. You yeah. know, you have to be flexible endlessly. You want to see that opportunity. I mean, I'm witnessing history. When I was a kid, I looked up to the moon and thinking, man, those astronauts are right there. And then sadly, the politicians killed the Apollo program. Now we're going back. And so exciting. And, and I meet with kids and they're so excited, too. And, um, and we, we, you know, we want to advance. Roll on Friday. Eh? We'll, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Keep everything crossed. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for mentioning the shirt. My wife, who worked on the space shuttle, makes these shirts. Oh, wow. Fabulous. You can wear it again on Friday. <laughs> I, I'll be happy to speak to you guys anytime. I spoke to you a few years ago, and uh, we're happy anytime to work with you guys. It's a date. Dr. Ken Kramer, thank you so much for joining us. We've enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, me too. Thank you very much. Somebody else who's struggled to, <laughs> to get any sleep. I was just going to say, another man who's <laughs> managing on not much sleep today.